choosing and predicting. I love those moments when, out of the blue, you get an insight on how you've been living your life. And they seem to come when I'm doing something mundane, like walking the dog, driving the car, or grocery shopping. It must be some sort of neurological circumstance or something. Anyway, today was a big ex existential question that came crashing in. Do I really know what's going to happen, or am I choosing it? Now, what I mean by knowing what's going to happen is a range of things from daily routines where you pretty much know what's going to happen when you take a shower or do the dishes to knowing where the money is going to be coming from to pay the rent. In fact, all those circumstances that you just know are going to happen and do make up the matrix of our lives, and we don't often stop to see all the choices we make moment by moment to keep that matrix rolling along. The quantum truth of the matter is that anything could happen at any moment, since quantum states exist in and out of time, which makes all possibilities possible at any time. I might think I know what's going to happen when I get into the shower, but then the water suddenly shuts off because the city workers turned off the water to the apartment complex while they repaired the broken main. Or I think I know what's going to happen when I do the dishes, but then the garbage disposal jams and then I get all bent out of shape about it. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that by habitually predetermining our choices by making predictions about our own activities, it shuts off the infinite other amazing possibilities that could happen. I think we construct a nice predictable set of circumstances for ourselves that, we think, guarantees security for our reality our money situation, our living quarters, or transportation, our relationships. But what if by doing this we are unwittingly cutting ourselves off from a huge potential of fantastically wonderful things that could happen to us? Perhaps a more quantum way to live would be to, instead of predicting what's going to happen, we just float in the question, what amazing things await me at any moment? There have been manifestation experiments where it was shown that asking questions about something greater happening is far superior to visualization techniques. In other words, you got to jump out of the box of yourself and trust that the universe has your back and is going to give you what you desire. Your job is not to limit it to a specific set of familiar circumstances. Now, we've all been burned badly by the unpredictable. So the idea of asking open-ended questions about our desires feels like giving up our personal power and control, and that is scary. Gary Douglas, founder of Access Consciousness, tells us to live in 10-second increments where any choice can be changed within 10 seconds. Now that's freedom. You desire something? Get the energy of that thing, just the energy of what it feels like, not necessarily what it looks like, and keep choosing that and follow the energy to the actualization of that desire. Abraham Hicks has a fa famous saying, hold a thought for just 17 seconds and the law of attraction kicks in. Hold a thought for 68 seconds and things move. Manifestation has begun. So rather than predicting everything that's happening to you, thus guaranteeing the same old, same old, Start choosing your desires by asking questions like, what would it take for blank to show up? What energy, space, and consciousness do I need to be for blank to happen? After a little practice, things really will start moving directly toward your desires, and if you stay out of the habit of needing to have a predictable life, who knows what fantastic things could happen. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.